Wimpy from Fielen, Senior Manager of Sales and Marketing at AM Media, joins us here in the studio. And also joins us at a time when, I mean, of course, there had been quite a number of reports in the news since yesterday. Very good morning to you, uh, Mr. Van Fielen, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for the time. Well, before we get into, in, in, into the, the specials uh, that are lined up, which are also exciting for me pers personally as well, uh, what's, what's the status currently? Is, it, is the status still the same uh, in terms of the arrangements that have been made? And perhaps for those that are not updated, can you talk us through those arrangements? Excellent. Basically what happened was uh, quite an unfortunate situation that the um, Busiaco Talco Airport was downgraded. Um, we require a Category 8 airport to operate our Airbus 330 from uh, Husiaku Taku. Um, due to some requirements with firefighting equipment, the airport was downgraded to a Category 5. That prevent us from operating from Husiaku Taku. Um, we immediately implement Plan B to try and alleviate the challenges we uh, faced. Um, plan B was to uh, direct some of our flights through um, Gaborone, that was the closest airport and also our alternate airport mm -hmm. in case of emergencies. Um, the uh, situation was simply that the aircraft from uh, Frankfurt on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday evening arrived in uh, Gaborone. Mm -hmm. We uh, equally transport passengers to Gaborone to dispatch them from Gaborone directly to Frankfurt. Um, that was what happened yesterday. Fortunately, through some uh, negotiations and um, improvement of the situation and um, the airport was again uh, upgraded last night and we could successfully dispatch our Frankfurt flight to Frankfurt uh, from uh, Husiaku Taku and we're expecting also the flight this morning from Frankfurt to arrive at Husiaku Taku. Mm -hmm. So in, in terms of the inconvenience that's been caused here uh, with, the, with the airports downgrading, does it also affect other airlines that are operating uh, or that are flying to Husiaku Taku International Airport? It, it certainly will op influence other airlines if they operate with the same kind of aircraft is us. Okay. Um, in this specific case, it was the Airbus 330 that was affected because it's mm. got a capacity of 240 passengers. Um, the smaller aircraft are certainly not affected by this at this point in time. Okay, so currently the Boeings that, that are usually used for the Johannesburg, that are uh, uh, Venter, Venter, Cape Town, those ones are still in operation? That's correct, because it's the Airbus 319s that we're using, um, okay. or for it be, even be it seven, be it Boeing 737s. It is aircraft with a capacity of around about 120 to 140 passengers, okay. and they are not affected by this uh, sequence of events. All right, so we're looking at what, is it the timeline that has been given? Is it two weeks? That's correct. Right, and okay. uh, we are absolutely confident that our partner in the aviation industry, the Namibian airports company, will be able to solve it in the given time. Yeah, but clearly this also puts some strain on your relationship. Huh? I mean, now you have to make a loss because of their inconsistency, negligence, for lack of a better word. Well, absolutely, certainly, but I believe equally, one can certainly be blindfolded by, by these events, but I believe as a Namibian nation we should equally be uh, proud of this event. Um, I guess it, it shows and demonstrates a lot of integrity by our shareholders, by our regulators, True. whereby there's no favours exchanged. And I think for the flying public at large, it's better to know that you're operating and you're dealing with an airline and with a regulator that shows integrity where it's necessary, we stop the operation. Um, we will certainly not allow comfort before safety. And, and in this case, I think uh, although it was inconvenient, there's also a positive aspect in that that uh, we know that we're operating in a healthy environment. Mm. Well, let's move on to the exciting stuff now. We know that there's been an <coughs> outcry over the last couple of, should I say years, yes, about the, 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 the expensiveness or the price of flying domestically in the country, especially to Ondangwa. And we've seen that you've responded to this. Is this a response to that outcry? Let me just... First, start off to say that mm -hmm. Anamabi is a company and our shareholder will always value the input and the outcry of the public at large. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we equally need to, to balance business with, with what is possible in the environment we're operating into. Mm -hmm. um, we are exposed to, to extremely high fuel prices. We are exposed to the volatility of the currency exchange rates. Mm -hmm. In this specific case, we've reached a certain maturity on the Ondangwa flight. You will appreciate it's one of our longest serving domestic routes and secondly Anamabi is extremely proud to say that we could grow this route from basically um, a daily operation or not even daily with a 17-seater mm -hmm. aircraft whereby we're now offering nine flights per week with a 37-seater aircraft so mm -hmm. we've reached a certain maturity on that route that start allowing us to differentiate and start uh, venturing off in, in offering um, better prices um, because the capacity we reach certainly allows us so to So people that. are flying? People are flying. 